Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus again today. I am Trace, this is episode two of five in our series on hygiene. Sup, Gene? I'm gonna make that joke every day. So far we've talked about when we started practicing hygiene and why it's important, whether we're doing it wrong. But today we're gonna talk about when we started caring about hygiene. If you haven't tuned into our show before, we take a big topic and we break it down so that everybody understands it a little bit better. This series about hygiene is going to be a little more historical in some places. I'm really excited about that. But make sure you tune into yesterday's episode so that you get the whole picture. We know some of us might be too clean, but why would we want to be too clean? Like, what's that need? Where did that come from? When did we start caring about all of this stuff? Hygiene isn't just a human thing. And I started saying earlier that it does have to do with our societies and our cultures and things, but pretty much every organism has some level of grooming or cleanliness or hygiene that they maintain in order to, you know, serve their function. There are plenty of animals that will practice clean living. Specifically, they will do what they can to rid themselves of parasites and bad bacteria that live on their body. Not every animal will do this in the same way, but most animals do this. It could be by rubbing up against a tree to remove particles or things from their skin. It could be rolling around in the dirt and the dust, which can dry skin out or remove, you know, dry flaky skin or hair because, you know, parasites like damp, warm homes and they want to dry themselves off or they want to clean themselves in some way. And some animals will lick themselves clean and sometimes Saliva contains antibacterial properties, like with our canine friends. Our ancestors, the primates, they relied on each other to keep themselves clean in part because they're very social animals. Grooming is a huge part of primate society. You see it all the time. A lot of people mime it with like picking bugs off of each other. That's part of primate grooming. And, you know, that's part of the reason why we as advanced primates likely enjoy brushing each other's hair and picking at skin and all of these other little things that are really weird that for some reason we get this really visceral enjoyment from. Many animals have been observed keeping their homes and their nests and their, you know, hovels in some way fecal free because that is a huge and important part of hygiene. Fun fact, by the way, a little sidebar here. Raccoons, they dip their food in water after they pick it up, but they aren't washing their food off. They just like the mouthfeel. It's very tactile. They're like They're not hygienic, they're just foodies, I guess. <laughs> Raccoons are weird. If animals do their part to stay clean in the wild, humans, as an advanced animal, kind of got it from that, right? Some people believe that we've always had hygiene and we did it for instinct and for survival and the same reasons that other animals do to rid ourselves of parasites and bacteria and problems down the road like a, I don't know, inflamed hair follicle or something. Early man would have likely gone somewhere away from where they ate and slept when it comes to their feces as well because bacteria and feces can make you sick and over time we eventually evolved to poop away from where we ate. It just kind of makes sense. We would have figured that out at some point. There were also early cave paintings, though, of men without beards, which potentially means men were trimming their facial hair. Some of them may have shaved in some way, perhaps to look better, or maybe there's a practical purpose because beards have been shown to carry bacteria and parasites, and perhaps they were getting rid of those bacteria and parasites. Besides the practical, however, there's also the instinctive reasons to do some of these things. We may have an instinctive bad reaction to things that are gross and we want to eliminate that grossness in our lives we call this disgust it's a universal emotion it's been seen in every culture across the planet along with like joy and anger and sadness and so on and so forth you probably know them all from that movie actually you'd only know four of them there are maybe seven or eight or more uh, Look it up, it's really cool. One study that was conducted with 40,000 people in 165 countries were shown sets of pictures and they were told to choose which one was disgusting. And the one that they had planned on being disgusting, the researchers had created this disgusting image, that one was chosen consistently. Their conclusion was that disgust is actually part of their hygiene instinct, that early man would have evolved to keep away from things that would harm us or make us sick. So again, we would poop away from camp because poop is disgusting, but it's like a chicken and the egg thing. It probably elicited a disgust response, so we evolved to do it away. Past the instinctual nature of being hygienic, it's something that humans have 
than actively looked at and worked on. Think about the Hippocratic Oath, right? You shall do no harm. You see it in a lot of medical dramas on TV. It's a real thing. It was invented by a man named Hippocrates, who some call the father of modern medicine, uh, back like around 400 BC, give or take, you know, a few years. And he wrote about hygiene as the influence of atmosphere, soil, and water on human health. He was aware that there were bad things all around us and those things could make us sick. They didn't know that they were bacteria and viruses, but he did know that there was something that was making us sick. And he was said to have made diagnoses and prescribe hygiene as a cure or a treatment for some disease. We talked a lot earlier about showering and cleaning yourselves, and this is not a new concept. You know, the ancient Greeks actually invented showers. The Romans had a famous water system, I'm sure you've heard of it, and that allowed indoor plumbing and had bathhouses with water, and the bathhouses weren't just about being clean, they were also about being social, but being clean was part of that. Ancient Egyptians were also very into being clean for both religious and social reasons. Some had bowls for washing right in their homes, and the very rich had servants who would wash for them, like literally wash their bodies for them. The thing is, they didn't know that all this hygiene was keeping microbes and, you know, pathogens away from them. They were praying to be healthy, and they didn't know if it was the bathing or the praying that was helping. They cleaned themselves to be closer to God, which actually helped them be healthy. So it kind of worked. In ancient China and Japan, they had bathing rituals that were also tied to religion, and we'll come back to all of this later. And a lot of these ancient cultures had created systems to help them be more hygienic, like sewer systems and toilets. They even groomed themselves. A comb was found that dates back to 3200 BCE. That's over 5,000 years ago. Why would you need to comb your hair? Ancient people weren't like that. Of course they were. We've always sort of been like this. There's evidence that soap made from animal fat and ash uh, also has ancient roots. Early texts exist talking about clean water and the evidence of early toothbrushes and toothpastes dating to ancient Egypt as well. So people have been concerned with cleanliness in one form or another for some reason or another for a long time. But that doesn't mean that there weren't low periods of hygiene in the world. This wasn't a slow build from, you know, ancient times where people were clean to modern times where they were more clean. There were times when, you know, it would dip. Uh, for example, during the spread of the Black Plague, the Black Death, not bathing was one reaction because people thought that bathing invited diseases into your body. It opened your pores and it allowed the Black Death into your body. However, that turned out that wasn't really the case. In medieval times, uh, people were bathing regularly because they wanted to be closer to God. Cleanliness, of course, closer to godliness. It wasn't just something your mom said that has roots back into, uh, you know, old day man. And as time went on, people did eventually, even with these dips, get generally better at cleaning themselves and being healthy. Eventually, governments got more serious about drinking water and waste removal and not just fecal material, but straight up garbage. And it took a long time for modern day hygiene practices to become commonplace. And a lot of times, like in the Black Death example, people didn't understand them, so they would fight them. Another example of that is washing your hands to get rid of microbes and germs and things. In 1847, a Hungarian physician noted that more women were dying after childbirth when a medical assistant was helping with the birth. Midwives had a lower rate of parental death. He concluded that this was because many medical assistants were coming straight from autopsies to help birth babies. The autopsies of deceased patients who had died from sepsis, those medical people were going right from there to the birth without cleaning themselves in between. And people were dying and they didn't know why. <laughs> so he started making them wash their hands before helping with the birth, and fatality numbers declined drastically. But the idea of them washing, and if that had anything to do with it, was debated. People didn't agree with it. The idea of doctors washing their hands did not take off, but as years went on, years of women dying after birth, Eventually, they figured out that the theory was true. Louis Pasteur came up with germ theory, which we'll come back to later, you know, realizing there are things that we can't see that spread diseases, similar to what Hippocrates kind of knew already hundreds and hundreds and, you know, thousands of years before. Eventually, washing yourself before 
putting your hands into another human became the norm. Actually, the American Civil War was a big milestone for hygiene. Doctors started implementing things like uh, bathing patients and washing clothes and making sure rooms were clean and bandages were changed with clean bandages. And the U.S. created the Sanitary Commission as a way to prevent the disease from the injured spreading to others. Author Catherine Ashenberg, who wrote a book about all of this history of sanitization, points to the Civil War as a possible turning point for hygiene in the United States in general. That was followed, of course, by then the height of advertising, which helped push things like soap and the Industrial Revolution, which added all of this consumer goods, shampoo, deodorant, and all of these things. The consumption and capitalism created the American virtue of being clean. We're a very clean society, not always a benefit there. To put this in a world context, the US created the Sanitary Commission a couple of years after England experienced what was called the Great Stink, when waterways and sewers of London were clogged with the feces of the people living there because waterways were the sewers of the old world. They hadn't really figured out how to clean them up yet, and London was pretty stinky in the summertime, but in the US, we were trying to not become that. We're not saying that the United States is responsible for modern day hygiene, but we are saying that we in the US, because we are a newer country, had some benefits in that way, or drawbacks, depending on how you look at it. Most of the world wasn't doing as great as we were in terms of sanitation at that time. So to kind of bring it all back, hygiene is a natural instinct. Organisms throughout the world have an instinct to clean themselves, to protect themselves and their immune systems from infections. And humans probably started doing it for the same reasons, though there was nobody around to ask them. But back in the day, we didn't realize how these pathogens were infecting us. We weren't totally clean. And as people started to figure out how bacteria worked and what was going on in this microbial world, we got better and better and better. But there was this interesting coincidence science and governments and medical technology is on one hand and on the other hand we mentioned it briefly earlier is being closer to god right is the religion and the religious aspect of cleanliness the power of tech and science and stuff that didn't come around until the industrial revolution but people were still being clean for thousands of years and so much of that has to do with the religions of the world and how they saw cleanliness so we're going to talk about that tomorrow. So when it comes to hygiene, if it's an instinct and we all have a disgust response, why don't you tell me down in the comments a time that hygiene just got the better of you? It was terrible. I've had plenty of experiences myself. Maybe I'll get down in the comments and tell you about one of them, but why don't you let me know? Also subscribe here on YouTube so you get all of our episodes this week. We've got three more coming at you about hygiene. Thanks for tuning in. You can come find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. See you next time on Test Tube Plus.